What's going on, everybody? Welcome in to the Wednesday, June 12th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, the myth of the inevitable rise of the Petro yawn. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Next up, don't bet against the dollar. See the themes there, Stu? <laughs> Europe's next up, Europe's climate ambitions thrown into doubt as green vote collapses. Next up, Russian oil tanker does secret cargo switch near Singapore to dodge U.S. sanctions. Oh, we love a good dark fleet story. And then finally in the news segment, COP29 to host Azerbaijan sees natural gas demand rise despite, quote, phase-out plans. Um, Sue will then toss it over to me. I will just quickly cover what happened with oil, gas, and natural gas prices. We are above $3 for natural gas. We're back, baby. We are back in business. And then we will cover quickly what happened. The API has a guesstimate of what you will see today in the crude oil inventory reserves. We will cover all that and a bag of chicks, chips, folks. As always, I am Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Where do you want to begin? Hey, let's start with our buddies over there with the Riyadh and China. The myth of the inevitable rise of the Petro One. I'll tell you, Michael, I've been, you know, with bricks and the advent of our stupidity in our management of our country. I've been saying it's been coming, and this article is quite the opposite. Let me give you a couple of highlights here. Astonishing as it is, quote, the narrative is an illusion. First, if you believe in conspiracy theories, the introduction of the petrol one and the ensuing collapse of the petro dollar would be the first domino potentially weakening the entire whole U.S. financial system. Very serious. A redrawing of the global economic map, the backdrop to global wars and crises. Now, the author of this article goes on to say that it's not going to happen and that the petrodollar is going to hang on and that the petro yuan is not going to because the agreement with Riyadh and China mentioned nothing in there about the petro yuan. I missed that totally. MDS did not want the petro yuan. So I'm I've got a the last line in this article ironically the only new petro currency to emerge of late has been the dirham of the United Arab Emirates India using it to settle some oil transactions with Russia bypassing use of sanctions also the ruble which is not mentioned in this article as well as some others but this guy is saying that the petro dollar is here for a while what do you think? Well, it's it's I think it's it's going to be a lot harder than we think to migrate off the 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 the, the petrodollar from a standpoint of there's a lot of business already wrapped up in that. I do think the petro yuan is coming slowly. It's all about the supply chains and how you know we've talked at nauseum about how the supply chains right. are shifting to exclude the United States. When that happens, there's no need for the dollar if you're never going to exactly. eventually go back to the United States and as more isolated nations get as russia russia has shown you can do it you can have a stable economy and not have access to any of the western right. banks and all that jazz so yeah, the swift russia, system yes exactly. they've get it's not needed anymore so no. I, I i'm a firm believer that yes the petro yuan is coming but it may not even be the petro one it's just going to be the petro not dollar not dollar. How cool is that, Michael? I, I like the way you phrase that. The Petro not dollar. Let's go to the next one, Michael. And it, don't bet against the dollar. And I this one I thought was an outstanding article as well, too. I am again a very not fan of the current administration. A couple big points. The Bretton Woods Conference, 80 years ago, when the U.S. dollar became the center pillar of the world economy and the U.S. E uh, economic, and for eight decades, we witnessed the predictions about the U.S. dollar's coming demise, but almost from the beginning, the debate about the future dollar has missed the mark. I think that there are some things in here. The U.S. Treasury had horrible bond sales last week. Yellen was like, 
she if scooby doo had a horrible haircut he'd be janet yellen i mean he she went last week they there's not nobody wants to buy the u.s debt it's and much like the last one once that once like the last article once that happens and things starting to get traded without the dollar it's the inevitable downfall where we just become like another currency and that's fine the british pound exists the it, other currencies exist we don't have to be number one but no. then it calls into question the 40 trillion in debt that we have then gets uh, it, 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 it we need the strong dollar to support the debt so there is an unwinding that could happen oh, it and is if you listen to Stu too much you'll think it's right around the corner but this is a good check for me to sit there and, and quit saying it's going to happen tomorrow. But listen to this last paragraph. Let me read you the author's last. This is from Foreign Policy. The move towards de-dollarization remains marginal but meaningful and moving. For the dollar to lose its place, it would take a series of policy failures in Washington, which happened to do, did I just say that? And for the dollar's detractors to create alternatives that have appeal not only in authoritarian and state-led economies, but globally. So the last paragraph really cuts into it. Yeah, no, absolutely. What's next? Okay, let's go to... Europe's climate ambitions thrown into green doubt as green vote collapses. Boy, I'll tell you, you can't buy this kind of entertainment because, Michael, what that what normally happens is things filter over to the U.S. as they, after they happen in the Europe, and green parties were on track to lose seats this week. The far and in fact, France, Marcon actually canceled the the uh, small uh, smaller end of the house across the continent frustrated farmers boy they had their cannons going off we covered a little bit about this yesterday let's talk about this boss Eckhout, lead candidate for the green party said support for the far right parties across the block could jeopardize europe's progress on climate actions quote i would say the global green race is on and you see that in china you see that in the United States. So this means Europe really needs to step up its action. But people cannot afford it anymore, Michael. Yeah, no, it's it 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 truly is. I mean, it, the amount of the amount of cost to actually go green is crazy. I hope there's people working on those calculations of the cost to actually go green, but truly do it. I mean, yeah, everything clothes, oh, yeah. it's not just carts, clothes, no gas grill you know, wood fireplaces, all that. Yes, you got to calculate all of that. Oh, hey, on Twitter, I just saw this a little while ago. A lady got an increase of $200 for having an EV, for having a Tesla, because they're now charging her weight tax in Texas. So the cost to go green, your insurance goes up because it could burn your house down and it can also weigh more for the car. So anybody that has an EV got, got stuck with another $200 on their, on their tag this year. Yeah, so, that's, oops. that's crazy. What's next? Let's go to the Russia tanker story. You got to love me a dark fleet. What a Russia tanker uh, does secret cargo switch near Singapore to dodge U.S. sanctions. I got a tickle out of this one. This was a really good article out of Bloomberg, and the author did a good job on it, but she said, oh, this was like the first one. No, Russia has 500 tankers in the dark fleet, and that's how they've increased 73% over the last three months of crude being sent out, avoiding sanctions. So I got tickled at Bloomberg on this. However, if you go in and you take a look, they've got it down to a science on how they found this. This was in Singapore, not in Club Med, like you and I talked about last week, that it was two Russian ships offloading in there. Um, what, we, what is this? This is, uh, what, what do we call, uh, it's not Club Singapore. We gotta, we'll have to call this something funny. Uh, yeah, singing in Singapore. I don't know, but it was singing uh, in Singapore. That's a good one. I like that. But you know, the when you sit back and take a look at it, it, I applaud Bloomberg for getting the story out there on that. But it does fit in along on that. Venezuela and Iran first discovered the Dark Fleet. Then Russia says, "Hold my beer." 
they really escalated up. Now, LNG tankers are appearing in the dark fleet. So Russia is now building its LNG dark fleet tankers. Now, pretty crazy. All right, what's next? One last piece in this article. They did not really understand that the way that a dark fleet operates is on insurance. Sanctions operate against insurance. So that's these are self-insured is how they, they go around it. All right, let's go to COP29 host. Azerbaijan sees natural gas demand rising despite phase-out plans. You know, Michael, you and I have been talking about for the last three or four weeks now that natural gas is going up huge. And the reason is because of the AI demand, a demand for natural gas. We can't do this without long-term guarantees that our gas will be needed, Zenloff said. What will happen after 2040, for instance? Pipeline gas, this is a quote, cannot be delivered in big volumes without long-term sales contracts. Boy, you got that right. I mean, Michael, have you ever seen such long LNG contracts? There's 25-year LNG contracts well, out Well, because now. you're getting closer and closer to what energy really is, is the energy security standpoint of that. It doesn't make sense to necessarily build these plants out, but you also want to secure gas long-term, 25, 30 years. Exactly. And in fact, you know, some of the, the story I talked about yesterday was building gas plants like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So we'll... You know, I, I top always, 28, top 29 in Azerbaijan. Isn't that fun? Interesting. Yeah. Well, when you go to Dubai and they come out and go, long live oil. I'd rather, <laughs> who's, who wants to go to Azerbaijan? Not me, man. You know, anyway. Hey, I, hey, I, I had a good learning day. Well, if you go back and take it, it's, uh, hey, the dollars, petro dollars, not quite dead yet. I'm going to pull a Monty Python out meme on that one. It's, it's not quite dead yet. But all right, guys, well, we will quickly cover the crazy rise in natural gas prices. But before we do that, we have to pay the bills. As always, thanks for checking us out on the world's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be at the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business, go ahead and hit the description below and to find all the links to the articles that we use and the different timestamps. They may be off by about 30 seconds just because of the some of the ads that we are running, but go ahead, check that out. You can also check us out, dashboard.energynewsbeat.com, energynewsbeat. Dot com. I mean, I mean, pretty quick, you know, stuff for me. Still, I mean, really, the the you know, we did see uh, oil prices rise substantially. Overall, markets were up about a quarter of a percentage point. Nasdaq up about three quarters of a percentage point. Two and ten year yields fairly flat. Dollar index flat up about a tenth of a percentage point. Uh, Bitcoin down three percentage points, down below seventy thousand sixty seven thousand two hundred ninety seven as of the recording. Crude oil up a quarter of a percentage point seventy ninety. That was after a pretty big rise that we saw yesterday, which I. Uh, which I miss. So crude continues uh, to rise mainly on continued strong global demand forecast. The API, if we can go ahead and throw this piece of news up here, Miss Producer, we did see API guesstimate of the crude oil inventory re uh, reserves. They're guesstimating about a 2.3 or what do I have here? Yeah, negative 2.4 million barrel draw. So we'll wow. see. You'll know at about 9.30 Central Standard Time what the e or what the EIA says. But they do have, the EIA also released their short-term energy outlook today um, where they went ahead and say that world oil demand is going to be about one, uh, supposed to increase by about 1.1 million barrels per day. So now the IEA has turned, has turned demand growth for oil upward. Hmm, interesting. Interesting that they do that for the remaining 2024. Sort of brings them in line as expected. They also officially say that in 2024 we're going to see a u.s oil output so there's not a not a lack of crude oil on the market that's for sure natural gas prices soar today mainly off the the continued outlook for hot temperatures three dollars and 15 cents as we sit here about five o'clock here central standard time um so we'll see you know as you're listening to this on wednesday we'll have kind of rolled over the nightly session and 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 that price action will continue to to bring it one way or the other but all you can say is natural gas is beginning to make a headwind i think you're going to start seeing you know companies look you know 
Chesapeake Southwestern, are they going to get back to turning? They they had a lot of, you know, wells that they used the fancy term for turn in line. They delayed their quote, turn in lines, which means we are just not going to, it's even different than complete. We've completed it. We're just not drilling the plugs out yet. So you really haven't done anything to the well bore yet. So they're going to, you know, keep that you know, see how much they can work down. It'll be interesting to see natural gas production rise. But, you know, that's really all I saw on my desk today, Stu. What should people be worried about as they... Um, well, I'll tell you, you know, you sit back and take a look at the banking numbers. We are still tracking those 63 banks that are in trouble. That's going to be happening here pretty quick. Also, the trading desk, you'll be able to see that. We are starting to source crude jet fuel and it's starting to roll. People are asking for it. So yeah, check it out. people, people are. So I will, uh, we'll go ahead and let everybody get out of here. We appreciate you guys checking us out here on the world's greatest podcast, but we will, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll keep on keeping, we'll keep our ears to the ground and we will keep you informed. And uh, yeah, it, it's uh crazy stuff's going out there, Stu. So uh, enjoy it, guys. For Stuart Turley, I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow, folks.